This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Lesson 10.01, Creating a Photo Merge Panorama. The Adobe Elements Organizer and the Photoshop Elements Editor both have the ability to create photo merges. Now, photo merge is a blanket term for a series of several different effects. The basic idea is that they allow you to combine different images together in different and unique ways. In this lesson, we're going to create a photo merge panorama. In the organizer, I'd like to type totem into the search field. And this will find very quickly the stack of photos called totem pole 01 through 05. Now this was taken at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. And basically what it is, is this really, really tall Native American or perhaps Inuit totem pole. I really don't actually remember which. And honestly, it's probably not really called a totem pole. That's just what I'm calling it because I don't recall what it's really named. But basically it's really, really tall. I think it was probably about 15 feet or so. And if I had tried to take one photo with that with my camera, it would have been very small. So what I did is I got a little closer and I took a series of overlapping images because I know I can use the photo merge effect to combine them into one. So I'm going to select all of these images here. I just used shift to highlight them all. I choose file, new, photo merge panorama. It'll open the Photoshop Elements Editor, and it will bring all of the files into the editor for you. Notice they're at the bottom on the project bin. Now, I get to choose the kind of layout to use. And the best experience using this has always been to simply hit Auto. Basically, it lets the application figure out the best way to align the images and what to do to them. It's a really great, quick effect. I get to choose the source files. I can add files or I can add a folder. But what I'm going to do, since these files were all opened by the process of bringing them from the organizer to the editor, I'll just say add open files. I'm going to blend images together. Vignette removal, vignetting are the dark corners that appear around images, sometimes based on lighting or the lens you're using. Now these don't have any vignetting, so it's fine. Sometimes images can distort based on when you simply stand in one place and just turn the camera a little bit to get a really wide series of shots, but it shouldn't be an issue here. And I'll just click OK, and I'll let the program run its magic. Now, keep in mind, the program is analyzing each image, figuring out how they should fit together, and then combining them all into one file. Depending on the speed of your computer, depending on how complex the image is, this could take a while. But when it's finished, the result is usually well worth the wait. And then there's a really great feature once it's completed. It wants to know if I'd like to automatically fill in the edges of the panorama. I'm going to say yes. Sometimes this feature works really, really well. Sometimes it doesn't. Basically, it's trying to figure out what should be placed in those empty areas. Each of the images ended up being placed onto its own layer, and then layer masks were added to hide parts of the image that aren't necessary. Since the images have to be automatically aligned, this does leave space around the outside of your images. Now, this effect sometimes works really well. Sometimes it doesn't, and you still end up having to crop the final result. But you know, it doesn't really hurt to let it try. All it takes is a little time. And the final result, I'm going to arrange all the documents so I can have the tabbed interface in this application. I just went to Arrange Documents and chose Consolidate All. And the final result is very good. Now, here's the really great thing. Layer 1 is the final image. This is what it did. It took all the images that we had. It figured out where they should line up. And then it used what's called a layer mask to hide the areas it didn't need for that layer. Now you'll learn more about working with the editor and more about layer masks specifically in later lessons. But the really great thing, I'm going to zoom in with the zoom tool. I'm just going to click and drag to zoom in really close. 
The thing that really always impressed me about this effect is, even though I know for a fact there's a seam there, I can see it. There's obviously a seam. When I turn the layer on and off, it's the only way I know. I can't actually visually see one. That's just very impressive. The application does a really great job of figuring out how the image should merge together. I'm going to fit to screen, and I'm going to turn layer 1 back on. That's the final image. I can rename a layer by simply double-clicking on the layer name, and I'm going to call it final image. And it's just amazing how well it did that, even filled in the background areas for me. I'm going to save this file. File, save as. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it totem pole. I'm going to make sure the format is Photoshop. This saves a PSD file. You'll learn all about Photoshop documents in later lessons, but Photoshop documents.psd files are the native file format of the application. I'm just going to leave all the default options enabled and click Save. So while all of the photo merge commands can be initiated from the organizer, in the end they're all carried out by the editor. They can also be run from the editor itself under File, New. You see all the same exact photo merge commands. I'm going to choose File, Close All to close all of the active image files in the editor, and this is going to return me to the organizer. I'm just going to click Show All again to return to my main display. You'll find the Totem Pole PSD at the top of the display. It's one of the newer files.